Hello and welcome to the channel Ginger Ninja's Movie Reviews. I am the Ginger Ninja. These are my movie reviews. If you're new to my channel, thank you very much for tuning in, stopping by and checking it out. It truly is appreciated. And if you're wondering what I'm doing, well, it's September. And at the end of September, there's a movie coming out. You might have heard of it. Saw 10 or Saw X, whatever it's called. So all through September, we are looking at the Saw film franchise, starting from Saw all the way to Spiral. That's right, I will be doing Spiral. Will be an additional review I will do at the end of it. But this week, we're actually looking at Saw 3 from 2006. Now, before we get into that, I do want to say a big thank you to all my new and existing subscribers. Your continued support and your new support means the world to me. So thank you very much. It truly is appreciated. Now, let's get into this film. So, as you can see here, this is my DVD copy. Um, it does have a little, let's see, poster on the inside. It's not of saw, it's of open season and advertising a bunch of stuff. Let's get rid of that, shall we? So, Saw 3. There is a bunch of special features and a reversible cover on here. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, look, if I can, if I can, I'll get a photo and I'll pop it up somewhere um, with the special features because there is quite a few there. Not a whole lot, but you know, enough to get you interested. Um, the film was again directed by Darren Lynn Bousman. Uh, it stars Tobin Bell, Shawnee Smith, Angus McFadden, Baha Sumke, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, Sumek, I don't, I, I don't know, Dinah Meyer, Costas Mandalore, Betsy Russell, and many, many more. So, I will be discussing plot specifics and there will be spoils ahead. So, if you have not seen this film, you've been warned, there will 100% be spoils ahead. All right. So, Jigsaw abducts a doctor in order to keep himself alive while he watches his new apprentice put an unlucky citizen, Jeff, through a brutal test. So, this film builds upon the gruesome legacy of its predecessors. Um, the film takes viewers on a harrowing journey into the twisted mind of the Jigsaw killer, John Kramer. Um, with a reputation for pushing the boundaries of gore and psychological torment, Saw 3 does not disappoint on both those, both those marks. In what I'll do in this review is I will be looking into a few of the film's strengths, but also a couple of its weaknesses. Because out of the franchise, a lot of people find this one to be their least favourite. And I'll touch on one of the reasons as to I think why. So, um, as I do, I'm going to look at the cast to start with. Now, this is one of the strengths of this film, but also one of its weaknesses. So, um, to do it, and the weakness in the cast, I will get to, but I'm going to do that under the special effects part. So, yeah, you'll get there eventually. Just bear with me. So, one of the film's strengths is its character development, particularly that of Jeff and Amanda but also John Kramer. So they're three characters that are integral to the story in this one. So Angus McFadden's portrayal of Jeff is raw and emotional. Um, it makes you empathize with his character's anguish, what he's going through, what he has been through. Shawnee Smith, Amanda, stellar performance. She was great in the first one, good in the second one as well. But this one shines above the others because her performance is a highlight of the film as she delivers this performance that conveys this, the character's inner turmoil and desperation, but also her need for love and adoration from John Kramer. And that creates an interesting dynamic between the two. Now, speaking of Jigsaw, of course, you've got Tobin Bell, who again reprises his role as Jigsaw. And his portrayal of this character is chillingly charismatic. He's not a very active 
actor in the film. He is not running or jumping, he's not killing and slicing or anything like that. You don't get a lot out of him in that way. His movements, his body is not the strength of his acting in this film. The way he vocalizes it, the way his character, his face, the way he comes across in those regards, that's where he stands out. And this is no exception. For the majority of this film, he is lying in a bed. His character is just so chilling and so smart and so deliciously evil that you can't help but be simultaneously repulsed but also captivated by him. You just want to get, you, you're invested and you just want to see how everything's going to come together in the end. Um, now, the directing and writing, the writing overall for the Saw films is one of those things where when you watch it the first time, you, you're, okay, that's good, I like that, but re-watching it and you're tying little points together, that's where this entire franchise really does shine. Up until at least Jigsaw and Spiral, then it, yeah, we'll get to that eventually, so. Um, so yeah, I, the, the writing is just top notch. The characters are developed well. They're actually, they take a bit of a less is more approach on this one. Very similar to the first film. Um, the second film had a lot more characters in it. You had the characters in the house, but you also had the police that were, you know, with Jigsaw in his warehouse investigating. And there was a lot of people there. This, you're focusing on four characters. Jigsaw, Amanda, Jeff, and the Doctor, and I cannot remember the Doctor's name, so, yeah. So in that regards, it's quite good. The directing is fine, uh, there's no issues there. Darren Lynn Bousman does a really good job. He, he conveys a dark and gritty aesthetic in his visual styles, um, and, and couple that with some dimly lit settings it does enhance the sense of foreboding and dread throughout the film, especially on Jeff's journey. Um, one room is cold, so it's blue. One room is filled with rotting meat, so it's all rusty and gruesome. Yeah, another trap room has... I'll get on that in a moment. Yeah, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but yeah. Um, there, there's a choice of certain camera angles which effectively amplifies this, this claustrophobic atmosphere um, during those sequences. So yeah, it's really good directing, you, know, you can't fault it. Um, now, I mentioned the effects earlier. And look, Saw... Saw gets lumped into the torture porn and gorno style films. I've mentioned that before. The first two films, no, not at all. There are some scenes in it which are gruesome, granted, but there's no, you know, out and out gore, like really, there isn't. Yeah, you know, there's a couple of scenes which are pretty brutal, but nothing in your face with blood and guts everywhere. This, however, takes it and cranks it up a notch, like it really does. And it has some of the most brutal and visceral traps, including my favourite trap, the angel trap. Now, this is what I was saying with the characters. Look, I'm not a fan of what they did with Detective Alison Carey, played by Dinah Meyer. I feel her character was criminally underused. She could have been much better utilised further on, pushing this, the detective story further as she tried to hunt down. Jigsaw and Jigsaw's accomplice through the series, I think that would have been ideal. Not, didn't happen obviously, but so this scene here just wow. This is what put it onto the, the Gorno scale for me. The angel trap, ribs spread open, everything out, guts hanging, you name it. That, that was not anywhere near anything that was in the first two films. This steps it up a notch, like I said. Um, I, I would have liked to have seen them more in more films, but you know, what can you do? 
it's it's a bloody it's violent it's a ferocious trap but it's only the first one yeah <laughs> there are other ones in this film the classroom trap that is just toe curling like the pulling the the rings from the tendons oh yuck the shotgun trap that shows up a couple of times in this one um and the next one as well like you see the effects of it I think in this one and maybe the one after as well I can't remember but yeah that is com an exploded head like yeah and look one of the ones which is probably a lot of people's favorite the rack if you've seen it you know what I mean and that is brutal it is not there, there is a part of it which is very gruesome, like, no doubt, the shotgun scene, gruesome. And, and it's just difficult to sit through. Like, it's... The sound of that is... Oh, yeah. Rewatchability, um, look, that's, that's a bit of a tough one. This film does delve into Jigsaw's twist and philosophy a lot more. Um, life is precious, you know people must confront their flaws and appreciate their existence it does delve into that a little bit more um, and look one of the reasons why i find this is probably people's least probably not least favorite but it's not their most favorite um it's the longest one and when i say longest i don't mean it goes for two two and a half hours three hours it's not one of those type of films most of the saw films go around 90 minutes 130 yeah uh 90 minutes an hour and 30 minutes 37 minutes whatever this one i think it's about an hour and 45 so it's a little bit longer um and look that's not an entirely a bad thing but i think if they trim that back there are some scenes which kind of jump back and forth between jeff and jigsaw if they trimmed them back a little made the film a bit tighter would have been better paced could have been a much better movie but the fact that it does slow down a little you know takes you out of it overall saw 3 is not for the faint of heart as it revels in its gruesome spectacle and disturbing scenarios however it distinguishes itself within the horror genre by delving into complex themes and character motivations particularly through the enigmatic jigsaw while the film's relentless brutality may alienate some viewers, it remains a significant entry in the Saw franchise. Catering to fans of extreme horror, um, and for those that can stomach it and appreciate the psychological aspects of horror, Saw 3 is a chilling, thought-provoking experience that leaves a lasting impression. Now, for a score, I, this was a bit of a tough one. For a score, I was going to give it 6.5 out of 10, but gets an extra, a little bit extra. Sean A. Smith's performance as Amanda. This film gets a 7 out of 10. So there you have it. That is my review of Saw 3. What did you guys think of it? Have you guys seen this film? Let me know down in the comments below. And look, if you haven't already, please do hit that thumbs up. Be much appreciated. And of course, subscribe to my channel for future content and hit that notification bell so that way you're notified every time I do release a new video. Do have some big things coming up, some interesting things, some fun things, at least I think they'll be fun, so hit that notification bell, you'll be notified every time I release a new video. But there you have it. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye. So, jib the jib the. However, it distinguishes itself from. It dis well. Fuck. But overall, that's you know.